Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor and welcome to today's video on the four temperaments and where you will learn to start typing other people based on their body language, based on how they speak, based on their behavior and on their action. We will learn to tell apart the introverts from the extroverts, the judges from the perceivers and this is your basic first crash course on how to type introverts, extroverts, judges and perceivers. The four temperaments relate to four different archetypes the introverted and the judging types called the leaders, the extroverted and perceiving types called the explorers, the extroverted and judging types called the executives, and finally the introverted and perceiving types called the advisors. All these temperaments talk differently, speak differently, process information differently, and gesture in different ways. What you will find is that each temperament has a native style of gesturing and talking and speaking that puts them at their peak in energy, motivation and focus. Now I'm noticing that my typing and my articles on body language are becoming very important and I think that you will all love this new book that I've got coming. This book will cover all the general information on how to type other people, understand other people based on their body language and what body language says about each unique individual. Now while we are all researching this subject, let's start talking immediately about the leader types. What are their general qualities and characteristics? and how do they come across to other people. The leader, the introvert and the judging type has a style of uh, expressing themselves and thinking that will make them come off differently to others. Leaders tend to come off as distanced, analytical, theoretical, disciplined and focused. We are the goal-oriented types, we are the long-term thinkers, we are the big picture thinkers, we are the people that prefer to work and study the world from a distance, from a theory, from a processed worldview. The leaders are in many ways the most autonomous and independent types, often their understanding has no basis in what is pragmatic or what is good for other people. It comes from an angle of what do I think personally through logic or through reasoning is the best course of action. The leader also comes from a perspective of focus and self-discipline and mental rigor. There are rules to how a leader expresses themselves. They're, they act and they act according to pattern, according to a steady rhythm, a steady beat, and often they exercise and think according to strict rules and according to some form of inner grammar. The leaders are the most goal-oriented types out there in the sense that they often envision a long-term goal and then they put themselves towards moving towards that task and it's when moving towards that task that they are at their best. The leaders do the worst in collaborative environments that require a lot of openness to other people and adaptability. The leaders are the worst at identifying new opportunities and to adjusting to new obstacles. And ever so often, the temperament of the leader will make them express themselves differently through body language. Body language is, after all, in many ways, half our communication, half of what we tell other people. And ever so often, what the leader will do in conversation is lift up their head slow, slightly and put themselves, their head, steady. The leader does not shift or move their head in different direction. They don't weigh information, they don't process or, or weigh options, they have a steady, composed and distanced way of holding and conducting their body language. It can look like the leader is looking down at you from a tower. It can look like the leader won't budge no matter what happens. Now looking at the gaze of a leader, the leader not just squints when looking at other people, as if they are musing on or theorizing on what they are seeing but they also focus their gaze, focusing the muscles around the nose in a way that makes them look like they are looking at something very specific. They have an order, they have a focus, they have a vantage point that they, or a perspective that they are looking at the world from. And the leader shows a lot of processing of what other people say, often by lifting up their jaws, often by uh, focusing their upper lips. It's often in the case that a leader is the most focused on articulation and how you say something and how you do something and in processing on and 
feeling what they are experiencing or thinking logically or rationally about what they are hearing. Now the critique, the main critique that leaders can get is that they don't pay enough attention because their eyes don't look open-minded enough, that they don't seem curious enough, that they seem like they already have their mind set even before the discussion has started, and like they are bad listeners that don't seem to pay a lot of attention or to actually think about what you say, and like they are in some ways unaware of the experience, unaware of where they are and how it feels to be there and what is going on around them. And in their gestures, the leaders tend to use and rely on two particular styles of gesturing. First, the digging of truth, the active search for what you are dealing with or processing on the inside, the active process of bringing out information that you have inside of you and then sharing it with the world, telling other people this is the different options, this is what we should do with this information. Often the leader doesn't seem to actively share information as much as they seem to have information that they then use to organize and to talk to other people in different ways. The leader is about using information wisely, processing information and using it to achieve a certain purpose or a goal. The leader doesn't listen exactly to what is said, but the logic behind it, the formula behind it, the essence or deeper intention that created it. And in how the leader speaks, the leader has both the tendency to highly articulate what they say and to speak as if they're moving towards a specific goal, like they are talking about something specific. They show the ability to, when speaking, focus their thoughts, focus their speech in a way that goes in a specific direction. And beyond that, the leaders stop and start mid-sentence. They have a tendency to suddenly take a break while speaking and then start up again. Now, how they do this depends on if they are ISTJs, ISFJs, INFJs, or INTJs. But the general quality of these actions tend to be the same. The patterns tend to be very similar. And comparing these patterns to the explorer type, the extroverted and perceiving type, you get a sharp contrast. Like I said before, the INFJs and INTJs, the leader types, tend to be criticized for not appearing like they are listening. But ENFPs and ENTPs and ESTPs and ESFPs, the extroverted perceiving types, are usually very good at showing not just that they are listening, but they are present, they are open-minded, they are ready to adjust and adapt whatever happens, and they pay attention to the people around them and to the mechanics around them and to what's happening around them. They seem like if something would happen that they can adjust in a moment's notice. They seem open to new ideas and to new perspectives. They seem like they actively listen and think about what you say and whether it's true or not. As extroverts, they look with open eyes, with their brows active in the gaze in itself. They look as if they are looking, really looking at the world around them and the people around them. Beyond that, their look is more curious. Their nose gaze isn't fixed. They look like they are going like, what's that, what's that, and what's that? They look like they are open to different kinds of information, even information that collides with or contrasts with other information. And explorers also seem like they are, in, to some degree, intimidating or affectionate. They look like they have a strong opinion on what's happening around them, that they care and pay attention to mechanics, to moving cars, to what people are doing around them. So they make other people focus more on how they do something and in making sure that it's done correctly. The explorer gives you new input immediately if you're doing something wrong or if you could do something better. The explorers tend to keep us up to date with new information and with changes. They are the most collaborative of all the personality types. They tell us if we could do this or that, they bring connections between people, and they tell us what's around us and what's available to us at any moment. The explorers listen, they weigh carefully, they test out this or that, what are the properties of that, what are the properties of that, what are the differences between these things. They, instead of having steady heads, weigh with their heads, they go, maybe that, maybe this. They test out. They move their heads and they often 
look down like this. They often bow their heads to other people in a way that invites other people to share, invites other people to talk, invites other people to do various activities. The explorers tend to use their whole face in their expressions. Their entire face tends to be a part of their expressions rather than centering on a certain area. The explorers tend to grab information around them. Wait, what's that? Uh, oh, and there was that, and then there was that. The explorers tend to weigh and say, maybe that or maybe that. Now, if we're looking at the advisors, a key difference is that the advisors are often picking information often more carefully, while the extrovert is grabbing information. The introvert is pinching information, maybe that or maybe that, and then they start weighing and they start testing and they often have a way of holding things inside, like they are protecting it from the environment. The advisors seem to, not, instead of sharing information with others, protect and safeguard information from others. They, can, they show that they can hold secrets, they show that they can be careful with information and with what's going on around them. The advisors are the people that show that they are good listeners, but also thinking listeners. Listeners that don't just look at you and uh, take in what you say and process it, but also people that look like they are actively thinking about what you're saying and going, so is that really it? Was that really what you meant to say? Or was there something else? The sheiks of the advisors tend to be generally expressionless, and often the advisors tend to speak more with their throats than with their sheiks. They don't tend to articulate what they say much, but they have a breathy way of speaking. The advisors stop and start mid-sentence. They start in a track and then they so suddenly stop speaking in the middle of everything. And then they can start up a completely new thread. The advisors are shifting topics. They start and, and then they go on another topic. And then they start on and then they move on to another topic. The advisors share the distanced analysis like the leaders, but with along with an adaptable quality. They seem like they are distanced, critical listeners. And where they lift up their heads, the executives bow their heads downwards. The executives are the most prone towards management, immediate hands-on interactions with other people, immediate organization, planning and scheduling together with others, sharing information and deciding which information is the best and where information should be put and where it shouldn't be. The executives are the people that say this is relevant and this is not relevant. They set a point or a focus in a group. They say this is what we are meant to discuss and all of the other things they push aside. The executives have the most fighter-like temperament in the sense that they actively enjoy butting heads with and challenging other people. The executives think in terms of goals. They think in terms of what options available right now best achieve the goals or the systems or the rules that we have set up in this situation. The executives are highly articulated types. They put strong emphasis into what they say, into their words and how they say things. They carefully weave their sentences and they seem really, really focused and aware of who they are talking to and what they are telling that person and how that person is impacted by what they say. They give you immediate feedback on whether they like what you say or whether they don't like it. On whether they think you've done something well or whether they think that you did it badly. They can come off as either very expressive and warm or as intimidating and strong in many ways. They have the temperament of that person who sits in a race car and is moving towards and avoiding obstacles and driving at a high speed forward. They excel in quick decision-making skills in saying, okay, that option now, and then that option, and then that option. The executives have the most breathy way of speaking of all the types, like they are directly pushing out what they are saying and in a very highly articulative way. Their style, like the leaders, is very directive. It's about telling people, you should go there and you should go there. But... Their style is, like the explorers, a lot about grabbing and uh, immediately going this and then there, this and then there. <laughs> and often it's so much about taking new information and making sure it goes to the right place immediately.
Their edge on the leaders is that they are much more collaborative and appear much more open-minded. But their weakness is that often they appear like they can easily lose their perspective or their calm. When you're learning to identify the different temperaments, the introverts and the extroverts, the judges and the perceivers, what you will basically be looking for is extroversion as in openness and immediacy and speed in dealing with new information and making new definitions and decisions on information. When studying introverts, what you will be looking for is distanced, theoretical perspective on information. You'll be looking for someone who is actively processing on and thinking about what they say before they say it. When you're looking for a perceiver, you're looking for adaptability, applicability, in seeing how to put an idea or a goal to, into practice. You're looking for weighing, testing. You're looking for holding up and seeing maybe this or maybe this. You're looking for and testing if the person appears to be open to holding different options in their head at the same time. When you're looking for judging, you will be looking for directiveness and an interest in managing, organizing and delineating how something will proceed. The extrovert bows their head before you. The introvert looks at you from a distance. The judger holds their head high and steady. The perceiver weighs and tests and suggests options. And as you watch this video, maybe you, like me, realize that, wait a second, that means that body language is a language, an actual language. Yeah, yeah, it is. Just like uh, <laughs> any kind of language, there are patterns and there are tendencies to how we express ourselves, and very few people think about these things. Very few people think about how they hold their heads or how they move their body around others. So it's in many ways a secret, natural, authentic language that we are all reading all the time. We are always noticing that, oh, that person appears to be sad, or oh, that person appears to be dealing with something, or oh, that person doesn't seem to like me. We are all noticing these things. We notice when other people have an anxious body language, or, an, or a steady and calm body language. We notice everything about a person. We notice so much about a person just by observing them. And I don't find the thought that body language should have connections to personality strange or weird. I think that there are lots of amazing patterns out there, but they are not meant to be treated as uh, fixed patterns. We can engage in all of these patterns, no matter our type. So it's in many ways more about noticing what pattern a person appears to be in at the moment. And it's about, in many ways, wanting to avoid all the stereotypes, all the false conceptions we can have about ourselves. You can sit and listen to a video where someone talks about how bad they are at something or how they struggle with something that they are really good at. And perhaps body language can help us illuminate a little more of the truth to a person. Perhaps that can help us see through a little of it all. But if it does, I think it should still be treated with a grain of salt. I don't mean for any of this to become about stereotyping people or boxing people in. I want it to be about, in many ways, learning to see the deeper nuances to a person and the many complexities to a person and realizing that, wow, a person is actively shifting between all kinds of functions and processes all the time, rapidly, often faster than we can even notice it. And then in noticing it, realizing that, holy hell, people are far more complex than I ever thought possible.